Friends versus me. Should I keep them happy or should I do what I want? Doesn't hurt them, but I feel guilty. And that's the dilemma of prioritizing the self. Do you ever find yourself in this situation where you're struggling to decide between someone else's wants and your own? Now I'm not talking about big life-changing events. I think that's probably worth a video in and of itself about like your needs and prioritizing yourself in a large scale. But I guess scale is relevant to the person. If it matters to you, then it matters. Take for example, a friend of mine who agonized over going out with their friends. Their friends really thought of it as something that was really important to keeping the friendship going. But my friend had kind of turned over a new chapter in their life and their focus was more on saving money rather than spending hundreds of dollars on drinks and a couple of hours on a night out. They wanted to save their money for things that they felt were more important and more long-term. So to that person, the choice between the self and their friends is very difficult. To make matters worse, it's usually the friends who are making them feel worse about themselves by saying, you should come out. They don't really understand. They're like, oh, if you really cared about us, you'd want to spend time with us. You'd want to come out with us, right? Which basically makes it a choice between what they want for themselves and what they feel obligated to do for their friends. Now, I have a tradition with a friend of mine. Every time one of us buys a new board game, we open it together. We're a little bit geeky like that, where we like to unwrap the box and go through all the contents and look at them and feel them and judge their quality and the weight and what they smell like and, and how they're organized. But my friend isn't around, which means it will be weeks before I get to play any of my new games if I hold firm to the tradition that we've created. And here's the thing. It's not just a tradition about opening cardboard crack. It's a way for us to connect. It's a way for us to remember to get together and check in on how each other's lives are going. And we get to talk about everything and anything as we're opening up the boxes. So to me, this choice is very meaningful. And it's also about whether or not I can spend time with friends and family who are really excited to play these particular games right now. And I'm holding them back from playing it while I wait to catch up with my other friend. So again, it's the choice between what I want and what my friends and family that are around at the moment want and a choice that I feel obligated to make based on friendship. So what to do when you want to do your own thing? Firstly, let's problem solve. Is there really no way to do both? Is there no way to change or modify in some way the problem or the dilemma that you might have, whether it's going out with people or wanting to save money or for me, the opening of the games. So in the past, what we've done if we're not around to actually physically catch up in person is do a video call. But this time, timing just does not seem like it's on our side. And even that doesn't make sense. He's on a road trip with his lovely wife and board games aren't really the top of his priority list right now as driving. And the other thing is too, like there's, there's, there's a few here. And doing that on a teleconference or on a video call is pretty tedious when there's a lot. If it's just one and it's an emergency, a board game emergency, it's not so bad. But when you start piling up more and more and more and I have seven around me right now and more downstairs. So, mm. all right, we can't sort of come to a compromise. Let's consider next values. Values and what aligns with them. So in the case of the expensive socializing, it might be things like security um, so financial security and stability. Uh, there might be relationships, obviously there's the friendships and transformational values. So this is where responsibility and growth as a person might fall. So for that person, it might be that they value the long-term financial stability more than going out and socializing. In the grand scale, friendship probably does mean more or is more valued. However, when you start thinking about the value and the alignment, the question becomes, do those friendships rely solely on going out? And if so, are those the friendships that are worth prioritizing over the long-term financial stability? In my case, however, I have two warring friendship values. One, the people that are around me now and one, the person that I've built this tradition with. But also when I start to dig a little bit deeper, I start to look at values around internal cohesion for me. So things related to my sense of fun, my sense of creativity, um, how I feel about the nature of trust within a relationship and how I value integrity and how that's important to me as a person. So where have I landed? Well, I think that it's time that I had a chat with my friend and 
worked out where we stand with this tradition, if it's something that we want to continue doing going forwards or not. So to me, communication is key. Ultimately, I value integrity over a new toy and I can be patient and I can instill patience in others if the tradition is something that we want to continue and to uphold. We have a hundred games downstairs. I actually don't know how many games I have, but something I should probably count. I have a lot. I have a lot of board games downstairs that we could play any one of in the meantime while I wait to catch up with my friend. If my friend, however, doesn't place it as highly, maybe it is time to break from tradition and find some other things that we can engage on. So my takeaways from all of this is problem solving and looking at it from different angles, evaluating my values and aligning what the core of it really is. And number three, communication. Open communication can provide a world of clarity on what's next when it comes to questions of friends versus the self. I hope some of these ideas and insights are helpful to you if you ever find yourself in a situation where your friends want one thing, you want another, and you kind of find yourself in a little bit of a loggerhead. If you have other thoughts and ideas, or you just have comments about board games, please feel free to throw them in the comments below. I look forward to reading them and getting back to you, and I will see you in the next one.